What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 49. We start today's stuff on the back of a big win against Manchester City. Tony coming out on top in the battle there between now. him and Erling Haaland. Obviously before that, he lost at Old Trafford 4-3 against Manchester United. Really, really tight, tight to race to begin the season off. No doubt about it, last season. I never really thought we were in one. Even though with a few games to go, there was still a mathematic chance we could win the championship. But this season... I'm expecting nothing less than being part of the Ties race. They need to win it. Both Manchester clubs, last year Manchester United won it in the save. And Man City, of course, uh, the best team in England. Most teams would consider that at this point in the save right now as well. You know, I, I don't think we have to win it. Our goal, our objective is top four. But I, I want to make sure we're at least pushing until the very last couple of games. Anyway, first game of this episode on the back of the win over Manchester City, Barcelona at home. This is match day five in the Champions League group stage where both teams were locked on points in the top two right now. And they're both qualified for the knockout stages. But but the winner of this game would guarantee top spot of a game to go due to the head-to-head -head ruling. So massive game here for the penultimate one of the group stage because no one wants to finish in that running top spot knowing you'll face one of the European giants for sure in the last 16. Starting the game off, oh man, I've got to stop using Joe Worrell. I just, I don't get on with Joe Worrell, man. Like, I know technically he's my club captain, but I just don't get on with him and I haven't done so, well, pretty much throughout the entire save, really. Conceded a sluggish penalty early. Rafinha scored, went the right way, but couldn't keep it out. But 10 minutes before the break, practically right from kickoff, back on level terms. He's become my main captain now, Brennan Johnson. Yep, wearing the armband in this game, despite Worrell being in the first 11. He's so much more influential for me, no doubt about it. Makes it 1-1 and puts us back on level terms. 58 minutes in here, still tied at 1-1. This was an absolutely lovely little team goal. Yeah, brilliant build-up here. Omar Rich is down the left and nice little bit Pass it back, recycle possession, find a bit of an opening. And who's there to turn in after a nice little team build-up? Curtis Jones, my guy! This dude is absolutely bossing it this year. And speaking of bossing it, Omar Richards, we gave him a contract extension in the summer. He was sublime in this game as well. He might not have got an assist or a goal, but I tell you what, man, he was he was really big for me. Oh, he's a bit of a tough one because. You know, Rodri Brown, as we know, isn't developing as quick as we would like him. He's still stuck on showing great potential due to the fact that dynamic potential is broken. So I don't really want to replace Rodri as a starter in this team because, you know, he still gets me goals. He still gets me assists. He's still a really important member of our team, despite the fact he is the lowest rated. So I don't really feel the need to bring in a better left back than Omar Richards because whoever we bring in will be back up to the teenager, Rodri Brown, even if it was one of the best left backs in the world I'd still rather start Rodri Brown uh, because of the fact he's just so influential but you know like Richards as a backup he's he's solid man like he doesn't play that much but when he does play he's pretty solid for me I like him a lot I'm glad I gave him the content extension there big performance 3-1 victory turn the game on its head and that means going to the final game of the group which is our final game uh, against Nice at home uh, no sorry away in the South France we've already guaranteed top spots we can lose that game 20-0 and while if we embarrass him, we would still finish top of the group. But I don't want to lose 20 nil, obviously. <laughs> anyway, um, following game was back to matters in the Premier League away at West Ham. I'll be totally honest, guys. It was awful. Like, absolutely terrible. Didn't even bother showing any highlights because there were really basically none. Henderson made a decent save from about 22 yards. Other than that, there was very little going on. So, yeah, poor game there, which means we dropped to fourth in the table as we close out in November. And you see our eight fixtures coming in December here. Lots of games to squeeze in during the festive period, as you know. Of course, that Nice game is totally meaningless away in France. I'll feel the week inside for that. Some really big games coming in this month of December if we want to stay in a title race and not watch the teams above us get some separation. So starting off with the struggling team out of the top six this year in the save. That is Spurs right now. They're in 10th place in the table. So taking on Conte's side here. I felt, I felt pretty confident despite the fact we have just um, uh, dropped points in two of our last three Premier League games. And I felt even more confident when three minutes in, Lucas Moura did this. Oh, mate, what are you doing there? Yeah, I'll say obrigado to Lucas for that because he's just given me a really good opportunity. But what was he doing there? I've talked about it before. I do like the fact that now on Ultimate, the AI will go to ground and be a bit reckless every now and then because obviously 
didn't used to do that, especially not last year. They would never go to ground and they would never commit a, uh, a slide tackle bad foul and a moment of recklessness. It's it's good and it should happen, but I talk about it a lot. It needs to be situation specific. Three minutes into a massive game, Spurs need to kickstart their season if they're going to get back in Europe. And um, yeah, your starting winger does that when the ball is deep in the opposition territory. A little bit needless there. Even so, I'll take it because it means we go a uh, uh, man advantage. And after we got a goal through Curtis Jones again, seven for the season for Curtis Jones. We went a goal up and it was 12 minutes to go. Taiwo comes off the bench and wraps up a really nice little team build up there. I've got to say, I was playing some really good football in this episode here. You know, you know those FIFA sessions where you just feel like quite in control. This is just one of those sessions. I was playing some really good football, getting some good openings, nice passing and moving as well. And late on in the game, still leading by two against the 10 men's first. We will get our third. I was mentioning him in the Barcelona game. He missed out on that game. I started Richards. Right decision. But this is why Rodri Brown will still be a starter in this team. Rodri Brown has already got more goals this season than he did for the entirety of last season in the Premier League. That was his fourth goal of the season. He also got an assist for Taiwo's goal as well in a 3-0 victory back to winning ways there in the Premier League and much needed as well. So huge, huge three points against the struggling Spurs under Antonio Conte. You know, I'd really like to see managers get sacked in FIFA career mode. Like, if they're, if they're really underperforming. Spurs right now, again, 10th place on the table, really, really struggling. Maybe a sign of low discipline. Conte losing the dressing room with Lucas going there. And I don't know. I'd like to see it, though, because like, even if a manager has a horrendous Tremendously poor season, they'll always stay in charge. I understand maybe for licensing it can't happen, but then again, happens with football manager. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see if he want to add that in as the years go by. Anyway, for the following game, big one here. Liverpool away, Anfield. Massive game, really. Obviously, right now, inconsistent run or form. And if you want to be champions, well, you know you've got to be consistent. Right now, we've been the opposite of that. Taking on the Reds away at Anfield, worst possible start. Trying to pass out from the back. How many goals have you seen me concede this season, let alone this save from trying to pass out from the back there? Caught in possession with William and Marcus Edwards gives Liverpool the lead. Did you see a solo goal against Spurs last week? I mean, he must have loved that. Obviously, uh, moving away from Spurs at such a young man, you know, re, uh, re establishing himself as a great young talent in Portugal right now. What a brilliant goal it was away at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. That must have felt sweet for Marcus Edwards there. Less said about the VAR drama at the end of the game, the better though. Of course, I won't rehash those old wounds for Spurs there. That, that, should, that should never be disallowed, in my opinion. But yeah, taking on the Reds here, uh, we fell behind early, got back on the old terms through Brennan Johnson. Then we took the lead in the second half through Curtis Jones, who just can't stop scoring right now. Three in four for our number eight, but in a really topsy-turvy game, Pedro Gon Calves makes it 2-2. Two -two. I knew for sure the game wasn't done, though. So many chances, action-packed game. I knew there'd be another good opportunity. And with 15 minutes to go, Oh, yes, Brennan Johnson. Mate, that armband is yours permanently now. I've taken it off Joe Worrell. He's been demoted to vice captain. Brennan Johnson with a brace, including the game winner as we win it away at Anfield. 3-2 to the final score. Massive, massive win there. Curtis Jones scoring back at his old storming ground. The brace for Brennan as well. One of those games where the stats were quite deceptive, I feel. Really, really even game. Could have gone either way. I don't know why my XG was so low. I really don't. I mean, yeah, sure, Brendan Johnson's header was, you know, probably not the best of chances. But the other two goals I scored were, were quite quite simple, I would have thought. You know, Johnson running through one-on-one -on -one and Curtis Jones scoring from about six yards out. I don't know why my XG was so low there. But even so, won the game 3-2, though. Big back-to-back -back wins against two of the big six. And I've said it, you know, so many times. You, you, want, you want to be champions. You've got to be consistent. And you've got to beat the big teams as well. It's all well and good picking up the bankers at home to your Bournemouths and your Southamptons and your, well, Forest, I suppose, if you're not doing a Forest career. It's all well and good getting those sort of wins, but really, you, you got to beat the big teams. If you want to be the champions, you've got to beat the big teams. To be the best, you've got to beat the best, that old saying. So we did there with back-to-back -back wins. So for our following game, Nice away, France. Uh, ran through this one really quickly for you guys because, again, it was totally meaningless. You would have seen my lineup, 11 changes to the starting 11, including Gaza getting a start. Actually made a couple of decent saves in this game, to be fair, but did end up on the losing end. Uh, lost by two goals to one. Anderson to Liska. I could have signed this game with a free back in season two, I think it was. Decided not to. Guess I'll 
wish I did now. Yeah, he turned the game on his head, really. Scored the first and then set up the second. But didn't matter. We are going through to the knockout stages of the Challenge League as group winners. That was already confirmed after our win on match day five. Barca come through with us. Thank God for head to head. So, yeah, we are through as group winners. You look at the groups here, and it does mean we'll avoid one of the European powerhouses, but there are a couple that have dropped to second. AC Milan, a little bit worried about them, and also Real Madrid, who were in the group alongside PSG. I bloody well bet we get Real Madrid. You know, it's so typical. It really is. Like, you, you top a European group, and you think, oh, yeah, thank God for that. You know, we're going to take on one of the, you know, no disrespect, but the likes of uh, Frankfurt, for example, or a team that you think, you think, you know, probably you will be favourites against, or at least, if nothing else, not one of the, again, the European elites. You like your Real Madrid, for example, and then that's exactly who you get. You get PSG, who dropped a second or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just typical, isn't it? That seems to always happen, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. No disrespect to Frankfurt, by the way. Great team. Won the Europa League last year. Really, really impressive. But anyway, for the final game of today's episode, uh, back home to the city grounds, taking on Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira's side here for our final game of the six today here. And I was thinking, right, on the back of the loss to Nice there, consistency has been a problem recently. Let's get back to winning ways here and make it free straight in the Premier League. Well, perfect start to the game. What a save by Dean Henderson from that free kick, by the way. Unbelievable. So that was David De Gea versus West Ham esque. That was unbelievable from. Dean Henderson and we led by two at the break Curtis Jones one second this man is ridiculous mate 2-0 Nottingham Forest and it seems for sure these points are going to be in the bag 10 minutes after the restart after we got our second goal through Curtis Jones Palace trying to get back in the game and to do so as well right from kickoff they half deficit and make it 2-1 Nicely worked build up inside and Artica Brow. Half the deficit is 2 1. I was thinking, right, don't capitulate from here. We had a two goal cushion, it's gone, but that's okay, we're still leading. Don't throw it away. Two goals in five minutes. Momentum is so, so important in FIFA, and Wilfred Zaha comes off the bench to make it 2 2. Bottled it. Now the question was could we restore our lead or would we throw away all the points? It ended up being a latter. Yep, 16 minutes to go. And Palace come from 2-0 down to lead 3-2. Three goals in 24 minutes. And from, uh, well, what seemed to be an unassailable lead, tuned up at home to a mid-table side. Well, this was an absolute bottle job of epic proportions. From 2-0 to 4-2 down. And after brilliant back-to-back -back wins against Spurs and Liverpool, how do we respond? Back-to-back -back losses. Away in France, yeah, I don't really care about that. But then 4 to at home to Paris. To be fair, they were the better team. Henderson bailed me out a couple of times, including from that free kick, which is unbelievable oh, save. But 4-2 to the final score. Big loss there. And that defeat means that whilst we stay in second place, Manchester City take a seven-point gap 16 games in. Want to be in a title race? Can't do that slipping up there. Man City already have a big, big gap. But that will end this episode of Karima, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I really hope you guys make time for my next episode coming out tomorrow afternoon. It's a special episode number 50 to say thank you for all supporting the save so far. It's going to be a good one. Hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you for it very soon.